Well, here it is, a souvenir from the very first night that John Lennon and Paul McCartney played on stage together, creating the birth of the Beatles as a live act. Rock and roll, skiffle, open for engagements, and manager, Gateacre 1715. I wonder who you would get if you called Gateacre 1715 back then. I wonder if that was like, a, you know, Lennon's Aunt Mimi or somebody's aunt or uncle or whatever. I mean, they were just a bunch of high school kids. They couldn't have had really a, a manager per se, but of course you had to look official with your visiting card, so that's what they did. Hi there, this is Pete Howard of PosterCentral.com. Thanks for coming by today. And instead of a poster, we have a, uh, probably my favorite item in my collection and perhaps that I've ever had. I'm just, um, I'm just way over the moon about this card. Uh, I got it a long time ago, mid-1990s. Um, actually, just about at the, at the birth of the Internet, or just before then. Um, so, it's, uh, it's, I'm just now getting around to blogging it, but it's really a cool piece. And, uh, of course, Skiffle Craze hit England with a... A big whoosh in the mid-1950s, led by Lonnie Donegan's cover of Lead Belly's Rock Island Line, and every teenager in England, it seems, picked up a, a jug, a washboard bass, an acoustic guitar, a banjo, cigar box, fiddle, if you will, and uh, started up their own groups, sort of like punk music 20 years later, where you didn't need a lot of musical talent and you didn't need any money. Almost anybody could do it, and so literally in the 1950s in England there were thousands of skiffle groups, and in Liverpool alone, on Merseyside, there were hundreds of skiffle groups. In fact, that really leads one to speculate. It's just amazing how the fickle finger of fate picks out one skiffle group from Liverpool to become the entertainment phenomenon of the 20th century, and the Beatles and all the others to fade into oblivion. Just amazing. Of course, perhaps someone like Eric Clapton, other big British rock stars, were in skiffle groups as well in the 50s. But the Quarrymen really, with some personnel changes, morphed into the Beatles, no question about it. Which sort of leads us to Paul McCartney's involvement, because the, the uh, Quarrymen were formed in March of 1957 by John Lennon and his best friend, Pete Shotton. And then in June of 57, they had their first gig. It was very informal. And then July of 57, a very key date, in Beatles history. That was when John first met Paul McCartney and Paul played 20 flight rock for him on his guitar and impressed him and that's documented in every Beatles book and biopic and in fact I think there's even a, sure there's a movie called I think When John Met Paul um, and it was just about that that very meeting in July of 57. But uh, it took John a little while to invite Paul into the group to swallow his pride and bring in somebody just as talented as him and it was October of 57 when the um, two finally got up on stage together and Paul was officially a member of the Quarrymen. And we know that it was actually October 18th of 1957 thanks to a tremendous Beatles researcher which, if you're a fan, you're probably familiar with his work and his book and that's Mark Lewison, based in England, uh, Brit of course. And this tremendous book he put out quite a long time ago called The Complete Beatles Chronicle. It's just an invaluable resource guide. It, uh, Lewison had the um, philosophy as a journalist of never printing anything based on hearsay. If, it, uh, if he didn't have the facts to back it up, he simply didn't print it. So he would only print things that were actually factually true, and so we can really rely on his words on, uh, on his word on certain things. So if we go to the fall of 1957 page in Lewison's book, I'll just drop it in here, and uh, perhaps you recognize the layout there, we'll look at a photo of John and Paul together in the Quarrymen. Now this photo was taken November 23rd, about five weeks after my business card was uh, created, if you will, with the pencil marks on it. But still, it's a nice thing to hold up while I quickly tell you what Lewison said about the October 18th date. Quote, Liverpool dance promoter Charlie McBain ran rock and skiffle nights at his venues around Liverpool. Playing lead guitar on this one occasion, again under the date of October 18th, 57, Paul McCartney's first night nerves proved insurmountable, and he made an unqualified abortion of his guitar solo during their version of Arthur Smith's 1946 hit Guitar Boogie. Now to the crux of the card. McBain's only recorded comment on the Quarrymen this evening was an ambiguous good and bad scribbled in pencil on their visiting card. And that is the card that you're now looking at, which I so fortuitously possess and own and have for a long time. And I'll zoom in a little bit closer here so you can really get a good look, not a bad look, but a good look at the good and bad. Interesting how the penciled good is much stronger and the, fad, the bad is sort of fading away with time and that's either 
ironic or appropriate, I'm not sure which, but it's pretty cool. And it's on there, you can see it, and it does look like the, the pencil writing is, uh, you know, whatever, 60, 55 years old, whatever it is. So that's, um, you know, that's really, let me, let me adjust this so that it's just, you can get the just there. Now, where did I get this card from? Well, I did my own research and my own calling, and I called up Ch uh, Charlie McBain, Charlie Mack, the promoter, is no longer with us. He's deceased. But his son is very active and knows all about his dad's legacy and everything, and I happened to be just the first one to call him a great number of years ago. And uh, I uh, formed a phone friendship with him and negotiated for the card and got it from him. So that was really, really cool. And he, uh, he threw a couple of other cards in just for fun, a couple of other biz cards. Here's one um, of his dad's, uh, McBain Sound Service. Um, his dad was quite an electrician and quite a sound system guy, as well as being a promoter around Liverpool. Matter of fact, he designed and set up the sound system for the Cavern Club. So that's quite a feather in his cap. And Charlie Jr. threw in another fun business card for me as well. This is really nice. Check this out. Rory Storm and the Hurricanes. Pretty cool, huh? And if you flip it over, you can really peg when it's from, because there's five awards the band received back then from 57 through 59. So this is a 59 or 60 Rory Storm and the Hurricanes business card, meaning their drummer, of course, was Ringo, so that's pretty cool. Now, that's um, obviously a very historic night in rock history in England. What was happening in America? Good question. Um, Elvis was not playing a date on October 18, 1957, but this rock and roll show was playing on the West Coast, this traveling review, and it was playing in Sacramento, the capital, of course, of California. See that Friday night, October 18th? They never had to put the years on there back then, but look at this rock and roll review. Look at that. Nine members of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are on this poster, plus, plus others. And look at those musicians who influenced the Beatles, including, but not limited to, Fats Domino, Chuck Berry, the Crickets, with Buddy Holly, of course, and the Everly Brothers. So, I gotta think the Quarrymen would have put down their instruments happily and flown to California to see this show and just put off their debut of this you know, new youngster named Paul McCartney and their group just to be able to see this amazing rock and roll show. So, so that's it. It's a business card today here at PosterCentral.com. It might be the last one I ever show you. I don't know. It'd be really hard to find anything that measures up to this one. But so it's probably back to posters next time. But just a you know wonderful, wonderful souvenir of the uh, the debut of the Beatles. So I wanted to share it with you as I parent you partly through the plastic there. <laughs> so thanks a lot for stopping by, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye bye.